えるあ Hello, our names are Ryotaro Homa and Keitaro Nishijima. And we're both from freshman students at Kaisei High School. Here is the basic outline of our presentation. First, we're going to intru、uh, introduce the introduction and the mechanisms behind the nuclear bombs. And then we're going to introduce the survivors' experiences. And then we're going to Secondly, we're going to introduce the past treaties on nuclear disarmament and the TPNW. And lastly, we're going to、uh, present the possible solutions toward the nuclear disarmament. Oh, sorry.、Uh, to, basically to basically introduce a little bit about our school, it's located in north northeastern Tokyo. And it's a, I, think it, I believe it's a school that. Really values the decisions of each student. So in 2009, former President Obama made a speech in Prague about nuclear weapons and eventually received the Nobel Peace Prize for it. Here I'm going to introduce a quote by Obama's speech. So today, I state clearly and with conviction America's commitment to seek the peace and security of a world without nuclear weapons. I believe that this is a turning point in nuclear. Uh, nuclear history because the leader of a country that once had the most atomic power in the world now committed to abolish nuclear weapons for a more peaceful society. First, we're going to introduce like, the mechanism, basic mechanisms on how an atomic bomb works. First, we need to explain two concepts quickly that are deeply connected within the mechanisms of, behind the atomic bombs. The first concept that I'm going to talk about is nuclear fission. Nuclear fission is the process that is used in many atomic bombs. It's a process where a large, unstable nucleus of an atom splits into two nuclei, while neutrons and energy is released. When it takes place,、uh, a chain of reactions called the nuclear chain reaction is produced. Like, it's, like you can see in the photo,、uh, if one nucleus splits, splits into two, there will be new, two nuclei that can cause two more additional. Uh, reactions and so on and so on. And this reaction makes, because of this reaction, about one kilogram of uranium that is used in this process is actually equivalent to 40 kilograms of coal, which is a tremendous amount of energy. The second one that I'm going to introduce is nuclear fission. And it's usually used in hydrogen bombs or thermonuclear bombs. And this is kind of like the opposite of nuclear. Uh, fission, and it's where, it's where it's a nuclear reaction between atoms in which two atoms collide into each other at an extremely high energy and fuse together to make a whole new atom. For example, like hydrogen atoms colliding into each other to make a helium atom.、Uh, and the two concepts that I've just talked about are actually used in atomic bombs that were actually dropped in Japan. And on the right is the little boy, on, oh, on the left is the little boy, and、uh, on the right is the fat man. The, li the little boy was dropped in Hiroshima and used a method called the gun type fission, which uses the nuclear chain reaction that I've just talked about. And because of it,、uh, more than 100,000 people were killed in the reaction and the detonation. And the met now I'm going to talk about the fat man. And the method used in the fat man, which is on the right, right, was dropped in Nagasaki during World War II and used a method called the implosion method, which compresses the fissile materials like uranium at a high rate, successfully reaching a rate state that will allow the maximum amount of energy released. And about 70,000 people were killed because of the detonation. And here is a famous picture. Of the aftermath of the bombing. Now I'm going to introduce some of the survivors' personal stories. And this is a quote by Akihiro Takahashi, who is a Hibakusha. And I, I, present, I present this because I believe that testimonials are the best way to learn the inhumanity of nuclear weapons. And I'm going to introduce some, a part of this. The heat was tremendous. For my body, burning body, the cold water of the river was as precious as the treasure. 
As you know, we have a proverb about meeting Buddha in hell. My encounter with my relatives at that time was just like that. As one can see from a quote by a person who experienced the droppings of the nuclear bomb, it keenly makes one feel that this was undoubtedly a horrible and traumatic, traumatic experience. Although Mr. Takahashi delineated his account of the experience, I'm sure that he found it difficult to express his feelings in words. He makes re references to religion and also makes a comparison of water to treasure. And here's a graph that shows the possessions of nuclear weapons in each country. As it is clear from the graph, the US and Russia has an overwhelming number of nuclear weapons. And to prevent the spread and to abolish the nuclear weapons, I'm going to introduce some of the treaties, some of the numerous treaties that were enacted. The first one that I'm going to, that I'm going to introduce is the Non-Proliferation Treaty, also known as the NPT. The treaty seeks to prevent the spread of the use of nuclear weapons. Uh, this treaty categorizes countries into two, two categories, which are the nuclear weapon states and non-nuclear weapon states. The nuclear weapon state is made of the United States, Russia, China, the United Kingdom, and France, while the NNWS is made up of the rest of the countries in the UN. Although the NWS are obliged to disarm their nuclear weapons, they can continue using those weapons, while states without nuclear weapons are deprived of their right to own nuclear weapons. And this ultimately leads to the problems of the NPT. Clearly, we can see that the Non-Proliferation Treaty has many problems, which are the permanent members of the Security Council, which are the NWS, have the right to own nuclear weapons, while the NNWS states Oh, NNWS don't have the right to own them, and they have to forfeit their nuclear weapons, which makes it unfair. The second treaty that I'm going to talk about is the CTPT, which stands for the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. The treaty bans all nuclear explosions everywhere and by everyone. It prohibits the use of nuclear weapons and also prevents countries from developing nuclear weapons. Also, the CTBTO, the organization that promotes the CTBT to be put into force, has, put up, has set up numerous monitoring stations, like seismic stations and inference sound stations, in order to detect any signs of nuclear explosions. There are major problems that are associated with the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, as seen in this graph. It has not been put, up, put into force yet. Although 182 countries have signed the treaty, 154 countries have ratified the treaty. In order for the treaty to enter into force, 44 specific countries need to sign the treaty. As seen in this graph, countries like China and the United States are countries that have signed the treaty but have not ratified it yet. India, North Korea, and Pakistan have not even signed the treaty yet, which is a, a really big problem. These factors make the CTBT unable to put into force yet. So I would like to introduce about the treaty on the prohibition of the nuclear weapons. Um, my talk is divided in seven parts. And uh, um, on July 7th, 2017, the United Nations headquarters in New York gathered in an assembly and adopted the treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons. Um, this treaty is made up, made up of a uh, preamble and uh, 21 provisions. The, the purpose of this treaty was to completely abolish the use of nuclear weapons. This treaty prohibits state parties from developing and testing, producing, manufacturing, acquiring, possessing, or stockpiling nuclear weapons or other, other kinds of um, nuclear expo explosive devices. And the signatories are barred from transferring or receiving nuclear weapons and other nuclear explosive devices. Also, this, this treaty stigmatized, that stigmatized use of, the use of the nuclear weapons and the other explosive devices. In the preamble, it reaffirms the concerns of those who experienced the nuclear bombing um, Hibakusha and uh, also recognizes the, the international humanitarian law and uh, the international human rights law.
So um, significance of the treaty. Um, the first thing that made this treaty significant is that it's the first treaty that um, comprehensively prohibited nuclear weapons. Uh, these are clear, clearly stated in the Article 1 uh, prohibition section of the treaty. And uh, additionally, um, the treaty does not require the directive ratification of the NWS in order for it to be ratified so that a treaty will be able to into into the post lovely and this was a major problem that CDB they had. Thirdly, and uh, in Article 6, um, it specifically states that it would give medical and mental support and also rehabilitation to those who were affected by the atomic bombs that were dropped in both Nagasaki and Hiroshima. This is because there would be less of an economic um, difference between those who were affected and the normal people. The countries that signed the treaty must give support to the Hibakusha as, as stated in the treaty. These are the three significant things about the treaty of the prohibition of nuclear weapons. So the problem of the treaty, um, the problem of this treaty is that there is a concern that nuclear weapons might be used even if the treaty is entered into force. Um, for example, although the Chemical Weapons Convention uh, called the CWS, a treaty that banned the use of chemical weapons, was entered into force, um, but the use of chemical weapons in wars are ceaseless. Um, to be specific, uh, civilian forces and the uh, regime of Hussein uh, use numerous types of chemical weapons. So some people say that the treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons uh, might not be strong enough to stop the use of nuclear weapons, considering the fact that the CWS couldn't stop the use of chemical weapons. And the second problem is that the difference between nuclear, weapon, uh, nuclear power plants and nuclear weapons arise because of the treaty. The fissile material used in the nuclear weapons and the reactors in the, in the nuclear power plants have different con concentrations. Um, one of the nuclear weapon states actually approved the treaty. Um, some might say that progress toward a nuclear weapon free, uh, free world can be made without NWS states, but opponents of the treaty uh, treaty states that the treaty is useless without the NWS states because they they are the ones who own the nuclear weapons. The possible solution toward nuclear disarmament um, to de abolish the nuclear weapons completely. We think school education is very important, and um, uh, specifically it. In most Japanese schools don't have a compulsory educational system of nuclear weapons, so Board of Education, the government should cope and uh, uh, need to cope and uh, renew the, the system of nuclear ed education. So conclusion. Um, nuclear proliferation is a topic that has been a serious problem uh, wo worldwide, even from before we were born. Um, however, we still fail to abolish nuclear weapons from this world today. Uh, Japan is the only, and Japan is the only country um, that has ex experienced the bomb droppings of atomic bombs during World War II. Um, there are still some survivors rem rem remaining to this today. Um, the majority of the victims have passed away without being able to see the world without nuclear. Um, but we can seriously listen to story the previous generation conveyed to the next generation. Thank you for listening. Any questions? Hi, so um, thank you for your presentation, it was amazing. Um, I really liked how you um, pointed out the role of education and especially in the Japanese compulsory education system. 
but um, my only concern is that for the government to strengthen the uh, education on nuclear weapons, I was just thinking that um, the, the point of views that the government imposed might be pretty arbitrary and the students might not be able to be exposed to different perspectives and they will be only confined to one um, point of view. So I was just wondering how um, the Japanese government or any governments in the world could address that. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, for, for the Japanese government to be able to uh, really tell the uh, really harmful damages of the nuclear weapons, I believe that like education from an unbiased view is really important. And especially in our school and like in Japanese schools, I believe that it should be like really made mandatory to go to the peace parks and the government should fund it uh, instead of like funding it for like the army and I should I think that it should be funded towards a youth education and I was really uh, I myself was really affected by education when I was younger and I had like many experiences based on these topics and I was really affected by them and like in our school like we do education on like from the Japanese side and the American side. And recently we actually read a uh, uh, interview with Paul Tibbetts who, uh, who dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. And it wa that was from the American side of the view. And like, I think it's really important for like, Japanese education to have like, points of view from uh, J the Japanese side and the American side so that they can like, uh, it's, they can like have bias, not bias, but like a point of views from both in order to form their own opinions. Not like, I think it's really imp almost impossible to give ed education from a neutral side of view because like every teacher has a bias. Like it might not be extreme, but they I'm pretty sure they have bias. So like it's really important for like uh, the Japanese government to give like options to each student on which side they would choose. That was a great answer. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you.